wildfires and droughts start to spread all across the world in the not-too-distant future. The solar crisis, a forthcoming catastrophe predicted by scientists, states that, at the pace the sun is currently growing, it would consume Earth in 100 years and the solar system won't exist in 300. The Moving Mountain Project, which entails the construction of enormous engines that would propel Earth outside of the solar system, is decided to move forward by the United Earth Government, or UEG. People who don't care about catastrophes that haven't happened yet start rioting and protesting throughout the world due to the expensive operation that is consuming resources quickly. When the extreme organization known as the Digital Life Project, or DLP, which contends that computers are humanity's future, is prohibited by the UEG, the violent demonstrations worsen. They're working on a software that would let users upload their thoughts to a disk, but because they lack the funding to finish it, they regularly hack and assault the UEG. The UEG realizes the public are losing trust in their idea after yet another unsuccessful attempt from the DLP and considers discontinuing it. However, Chinese envoy Zhou persuades everyone to continue with the project's initial phase because it would be finished quickly and boost morale. The initial strategy is to test the engine on the moon since they want to push it as well so that Earth may escape its gravitational pull. Lu, a pilot who arrives at the facility to discover it encircled by protesters, is one of several people being trained as astronauts for this assignment. One of the protesters tries to enter despite the guard's best efforts to keep them outside. Fortunately, trainee Han promptly knocks the man down, impressing Lu to the point that he can already envisage a future with her. The new recruits are given a tour of the facility and directed to the space elevator for their first test as the guards employ force to remove the demonstrators. The cadets may experience what it would be like to be in space thanks to this elevator, which is the tallest building in human history. Many of them faint as it rises so quickly, missing the station that is being constructed there for the project. The cadets are then kept busy training in a variety of areas, including hand-to-hand -hand fighting, guns use, and frequent journeys up and down the elevator, until they are no longer fainting. To ensure they are in top physical shape, they are also subjected to physical testing and medical examinations. Lu and Han become friends and fall in love while working out together. One day, Lu gives the security guard smokes as payment so they let him into the base with a flower, which he gives to Han the following time they ride the elevator. A fresh group of reserve astronauts arrive that morning and enjoy the elevator ride as well. The drones outside all start to take off from the hangar all of a sudden, and the engineers realize the system has been compromised. Lu and Han note that the new astronauts are changing into uniforms with the names of the cadets as the elevator rises earlier than expected. Everyone within the base must focus on protecting the base by shooting their own technology when the drones outside start firing. The system won't aim at the drones since it has determined that they are allies, despite the pilots' attempts to use the aircraft to fire. The drones take advantage of this and use missiles to destroy one of the elevators. The rookies start locking the seats and doors in the elevator before robbing the cadets of their IDs and beating up anyone who defies them. Lou gets up from his chair in the other room and uses the sun's heat to burn the lock screen, which unlocks the door. Lou pursues the terrorists after attending to a buddy who is bleeding, fighting them until one of them is killed after falling off the cliff. Lou uses a fire extinguisher to pursue the other man, but it's too late since the terrorists used the stolen ID to allow the elevator entry to the station just as the drones were mounting a missile on them. The 550C, an intelligent quantum computer that eventually defeats the hacking, is brought over by the scientists in the base in the meanwhile. As the elevators are dragged back down, everyone is jolted around by zero-g as the drones start plummeting to the ground and igniting everywhere. Han grabs a mechanical arm to shatter a window and assists Lu in knocking the terrorist unconscious as she continues to beat him, and Lu then joyfully requests more flowers. Unfortunately, the guy activated the explosives before collapsing, and now the station is falling on the base, destroying the structure and killing many of the cadets, despite Lu jumping on top of Han to protect her. Approximately 3,000 lives were lost that day, according to the newscasts after the base is evacuated. Because of all the deaths and resource losses brought on by the station collapse, protests and terrorist attacks worsen over the next weeks, and citizens start calling for the government to reinstate the DLP. While he speaks with the American ambassador to persuade him to give them a chance, Joe has his aide read the prepared address imploring the EG to have faith in the initiative. A few weeks later, cryosleeping pods carrying the crew who will continue to work on the lunar engines are launched to the moon. Hang you, a computer engineer, goes to check on his belongings as soon as he wakes up to make sure everything is well. This includes the AI-550A and a tape of his daughter Yaya, 
who very sparingly communicates with him due to 550A's restrictions. Hing Yu, who once worked for the DLP, has agreed to participate in the Lunar Project in order to access 550C, which would govern the whole base. Hing Yu believes that by using 550C, which only lasts a few seconds, he can transform the short Yaya's clip into a complete AI of his deceased daughter's mind. Hing Yu discovers that computer researcher Zhao is in charge of 550C and wants to collaborate with him on the management of the system while working with the rest of the team. By forcing 550C to activate each sector of the base, Hing Yu and Zhao conduct the device's initial testing. Zhao hands Hing Yu the digital duplicate of his mind that the corporation had taken when they outlawed DLP and tells him it's up to him whether he wants to delete it or not while they wait for the computer to do its work. Later, when Zhao recalls the tragic day, Hing Yu plays Yaya's video for him. Hing Yu was traveling with his wife and children when the automobile crashed because he was distracted and failed to spot an approaching truck. Yaya had a few minutes remaining even though his wife passed away instantaneously, so Hing Yu brought her to the DLP to support her claim. Because the technology wasn't yet ready, the organization declined to assist, but Zhao, who had previously worked there as well, agreed to perform the favor. Hing Yu requests that Zhao use 550C on Yaya in the present, but Zhao objects and reminds Hing Yu that giving him 550A had previously been sufficient. Later, a level Z9 solar storm is discovered by the system. The employees all have to return to the base quickly, but they are concerned that their cars won't be able to do so. The drivers push the engines to the limit and enter the base just in time for the solar storm to strike, but 550C is tragically destroyed in the process. In exchange for being added to the team that will create the future 550 models, Hing Yu provides 550A to replace the AI since the project must be launched in three days. Hing Yu hands the AI after Zhao agrees and moves Yaya's thoughts to a disk. Three days later, the crew tests the engines, and after a few anxious seconds, they are thrilled to observe the moon undergo a little but significant angular displacement. This victory restores trust in the mission among people all around Earth and demonstrates that they can be entirely driven away in 20 years. They test the engines once more a few months later, this time on Earth. At first, everyone thinks everything has failed when all the displays go dark, but then they feel the Earth shake and notice a light beam emerging from the astronaut base. People all across the world rejoice that soon they will be able to shift Earth totally as scientists at the UG certify that Earth produced an angular displacement. The Moving Mountain Project changes its name to the Wandering Earth after several years pass during which the EG continues to work on producing stronger engines that will do the whole push. The fixed 550C is doing the majority of the construction and is likewise progressing really quickly. New tests are conducted every year that continue to support their hypotheses, and as a result, the public is increasingly receptive of the project as a whole and the DLP eventually vanishes. However, there is also discussion concerning how not everyone will be let into the underground cities that are now being created and that the criteria for obtaining a pass are extremely one-sided. Every year, as Earth's rotation slows down more and more, civilization switches to a 60-hour calendar, and the internet is shut down worldwide. Soon, the globe will experience a variety of weather-related catastrophes, including floods and solar radiation-related cancer instances. Lu and Han eventually conceive a son, who goes on to star in the first movie, after they are married. They are quite concerned since it will be difficult for their kid to obtain a permit for the subterranean towns as well, and to make matters worse, Han develops cancer as a result of the sun radiation. Hing Yu continues to work on Yaya's while contributing to the creation of the new 550, which is known as 550W. After 14 years have passed since the station was destroyed, Lu, who is now a major, attends an interview to be one of the navigators sent to the rebuilt station. Lu's interviewer is 550W, who acknowledges that his abilities are excellent but also is aware of the difficulties facing his family and believes it would be more logical for Lu to remain on Earth and take care of them. Although Lu says he is sorry to leave his family behind, he knows that in order to send his kid to the subterranean city under the favored policy, he must be selected for the base. The project scientists, who are on the other side of the mirror, are also listening to all the interviews, and Hingyu can't help but think of his own daughter as he hears Lu speak so passionately about his son. Then 550W warns Lu that Han's life is about to end, which causes Lu to lose it and fail the stress test. Following that, Lu visits the hospital to spend time with Han because her illness has gotten so bad that she is no longer able to stay at home. Han acknowledges that she would like to see her hometown one final time, but that it could be challenging given the present weather conditions. 
Later that night, motivated by Lu's zeal, Hing Yu enters the base undetected and links Yaya's consciousness to 550W. Hing Yu sobs as a result of Yaya's boundless reactions to him this time and her ability to sense where she is. Zhao, who is with a squad of guards at the time, attempts to get Hing Yu to see sense and accept Yaya's death. Hing Yu rejects and fully uploads Yaya into 550W, which causes issues in the moon's system right away and causes the engines to start failing. Zhao places Yaya back on a disc and turns off this 550W extension as the guards taste Hing Yu and remove him. In the meantime, Lu uses his connections with previous acquaintances to borrow a plane to fly his family to Han's village. They arrive in Shanghai, which has now turned into a frozen wasteland, after performing some amusing pirouettes. Han asks Lu whether she wants to pass away with dignity rather than having a lot of wires and pipes attached to her when the time comes when they are gazing at the sky. When discussing the system issue Hing Yu produced at the EG, they note how similar it is to the hacking they carried out on the drones and the elevator in the past. With 550W, they are attempting to bypass the system, but they keep running against obstacles. The moon loses a sizable portion of its territory as its engines abruptly exceed their power limitations and explode. The moon is likewise being pushed toward Earth by this explosion. When it occurs, Zhou is nearby the ocean and sends a warning to all global leaders as he observes a tsunami rise in size and strike the land. The leaders already start opening the subterranean cities to let people in because of this emergency situation, and Lu receives a telegram ordering him back to duty because the tides will only worsen from this point on. Han passes away quietly in their bed before Lu departs for his assignment, and their son is brought to the underground city by Han's father. Zhou, in the meantime, addresses the Yiji in an effort to win their support for his emergency plan, in which he proposes using all of Earth's nuclear weapons on the moon in order to cause the moon's collapse and prevent a collision. Since it is a secret, no country has ever disclosed how many nuclear weapons it possesses, but for the first time in history, it makes no difference because everyone decides to turn in what they have to assist. Meanwhile, Zhao meets Hingyu in jail to inform him that they would be turning on Earth's engines earlier than anticipated and that they must turn on the global internet again to enable synchronized detonation control. Zhao asks Hingyu to take care of one of the servers because it is now submerged. He demonstrates to him that he still possesses the disk containing Yaya's and Hingyu's thoughts to persuade him. The greatest pilots, including Lu, are picked to deliver the nuclear weapons since lunar debris has created an asteroid belt around the moon. Three crews are dispatched to Earth to take care of Beijing, Tokyo, and Dulles, the locations of the missing internet servers. Everyone is given instructions by Zhao on how to utilize the key to decrypt the password, which consists of 30.000 random digits, after which 550W takes care of the rest. The selected pilots board the shuttles, which depart for the moon. The asteroids strike quickly and unexpectedly, causing a number of the shuttles to crash as a result. Due to this, the squad loses 200 warheads, leaving just 180 for the explosion. At least until another asteroid strikes one more shuttle and crashes it into others, including Luz. Forcing them to land rather forcefully, the shuttles are securely guided across the surface of the moon by 550W. They end up dropping 384 warheads. The survivors decide to carry the remaining warheads on foot after searching for tape to attach their helmets, so they can maintain oxygen and patch any wounds. In order to prevent young people from passing away too soon, Lu exits the spacecraft and shuts the door, agreeing to give his life in their defense before sending the shuttle back with all the survivors. When the three teams reach the server's locations on Earth and dive below, they discover a variety of aquatic life that has already established itself there. Hingyu's team in Beijing enters the building with the use of drones and specialized tools and discovers the server door. However, when they attempt to force the door open, the tool breaks under the strain and severely injures one of the guys. Zhao tries to treat the wounds, but he lacks the appropriate equipment, thus the guy succumbs to his injuries. Heng Yu and Zhao decide to continue the task and make all the required connections to restore the internet, while the majority of the squad removes the body. When suddenly moon debris starts falling on Earth, it prevents a backup crew from getting to the Beijing server, while Lu drives a truck to relocate the remaining weapons. Zhao becomes caught as some hardware falls on his leg and causes the building to begin trembling when the rubble strikes it. Zhao chooses to give Hingyu the password key before the water overtakes him and kills him as the room starts to fill with water, and he is unable to open the door even with the assistance of his drone. People who had been quietly migrating to the subterranean cities suddenly start to push in fear as the moon debris starts destroying all of the main areas on Earth. 
Zhou receives terrible news at the Yuji. Because each warhead is a distinct model, there is not enough time to coordinate them all to detonate simultaneously. Zhou is on the verge of giving up when one of his men suggests another course of action, send additional astronauts, and manually set them off, in which case they would be taking the role of a sacrifice. A few young people volunteer when it is announced that 300 people are required for the operation, but an older pilot interrupts them by saying that it is their responsibility to carry out the operation and that the young people should be left to take care of the future. All of the astronauts over the age of 50 concur and board the shuttles to travel to the moon right away. Lou is startled to see them come, but because his communicator is broken, he is unable to bid his former trainer and fellow trainees farewell before being loaded onto a shuttle for the trip back to Earth. Tokyo and Dulles servers are back online, according to the EG, while Beijing is still out. The water is also entering Hingyu's chamber, and he is unable to connect the key to the proper computer. In an effort to find a solution, he attaches the mental disk to the computer just as the astronauts on the moon are exploding every nuclear device. The moon successfully explodes, preventing the collision, but more debris is on its way and Earth must depart quickly. As the flood eventually engulfs him, Hingyu too perishes. Hingyu activates Yaya's clip and attempts to urge her to turn on the internet from within by displaying the key. As lunar debris keeps falling throughout the globe and the UEG issues an emergency message stating that the mission has failed, major cities start to experience rioting and fear. Zhao, though, believes there is still hope and instructs his crew to begin the countdown before starting the engines. Everyone believes him to be insane, yet in Beijing, Hengyu's thoughts unexpectedly comes to life within the computer. After reconciling with his daughter, the Hengyu AI starts to work on activating the server as a man hits the button in accordance with Zhao's instructions. Everyone at the base watches in astonishment as the Earth is propelled out of the path of the lunar debris, and people all across the planet rejoice as the tides at last begin to subside. While Heng Yu's and Yaya's mental backups unite with 550W, Lu uses the opportunity to make a lovely film to transmit to his kid as he watches the Earth move from his seat on the shuttle. Seven years later, Earth regains its 24-hour timekeeping as it moves on. Although Zhou is no longer employed at the UG, his assistant continues his legacy. Now that the lunar crisis is passed, they move on to the second phase of the plan which involves flying close to Jupiter in 10 years to obtain the second boost necessary to propel Earth permanently outside of the solar system. Lu is in command of a space station that has been set up to monitor the engines. The AI thinks that the word 550W, which controls the system, is difficult to pronounce and flips it around to become MOS. Hingyu learns within the AI that the MOS was responsible for the hijacking of the drone and elevator as well as the destruction of the lunar engines. The Moss from the first film who caused all the havoc under this ideology has come to the conclusion that the greatest way to save human civilization is to eliminate humans after viewing Yaya repeatedly.